Hey, I'm going to show you how to take your own vector design and place it on a website. It doesn't matter whether you design in Illustrator, Figma, Inkscape, or whatever. Many web devs default to inlining SVG code into their HTML, and there's good reason to do so, such as not having to upload images, which also means less server requests. However, sometimes the alternative is avoided simply because the web dev doesn't even know an alternative exists. That alternative I'm referring to is instead of placing your SVG code into HTML, you place your SVG code into CSS. We do so using the CSS property background image. Let me show you some real use cases. The most obvious use case is backgrounds. You can fill sections with your SVG background or create a shape divider. On the flip side, treating an inline SVG as a background takes way more effort than it's worth. But the not so obvious use case for placing SVG in your CSS is using icons on HTML elements, such as form elements like the search bar with the magnifying glass icon or unordered lists. Take this list for example. By default, the list would get disk shaped bullets that match the color of the font. Instead, we're disabling the bullet and using SVG icons. So how do we put SVG code right into CSS? You can't just paste it as is. The SVG code needs to be treated first. I built a free SVG to CSS converter for you. Let's demonstrate how easy it is to use. We need an SVG for the demo. If you made your own or sourced one online, I highly recommend running the code through SVG OMG to strip out unnecessary markup that you get from programs like Illustrator, link in the description. I'll grab an SVG from svgbackgrounds.com, but we don't need to worry about optimizing it. I could export as CSS, but for this demo, we need to copy the SVG code. Next, we'll navigate to freebies, then SVG to CSS converter. If you're logged in, you'll find it under tools, then SVG to CSS converter. We'll paste the code into the SVG input field and it automatically converts and outputs what's called a data URI or data URL which is what we can place in our CSS property background image. And in fact, we can also use the data URI on other CSS properties that accept an image value, such as list style image for custom bullets, cursor for a custom cursor, border image for ugly borders, and a few others. Under the input and output fields, there are a few options which we'll run through. In 2024, the modern option under browser support should be your choice. The legacy version was needed on older browsers that require more special characters to be URL encoded. While it still works, it adds extra gobbledygook and the less characters, the better. If you click the various options under CSS helpers, you'll notice the output changes. Your choice will depend on which CSS property you're using. I'm going to demo the advanced background image option since it's by far the most useful. I'm gonna copy the output open my editor and a simple HTML document. Let's break down the markup. There is an H1 element, which has good padding and a black background. Wrapping the H1 is a div with the class of main. The main class gives the div padding and a purple background. Now I'll paste the CSS output from the converter into the main class. The commented out lines of code are each of the properties that can style the appearance of your background image. There is an article link below the converter which explains each and every property. I'm only going to use the common background properties, so let's get rid of the others. We already have a background color, delete. We don't need background attachment, delete, nor origin clip or blend mode, delete. We don't want background repeat, so we'll disable it with no repeat. To position the background, we'll center it. Let's quickly remove the H1 background so we can see what's going on behind it. For size, I usually choose cover, which makes the background completely fill its container. Another great option is contain, which makes the background as big as possible without spilling outside of its container. Those are the basics you need to know. But if you're also interested in how to create custom SVG bullets, I wrote a tutorial and filmed the demo. Links are in the description. Hope that was helpful. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments. Otherwise, have a good one.